Hi and welcome to another video. Thank you very much for joining me. Today we're going to be covering macro versus telephoto for close-up photography because both offer such different capabilities but actually when it comes to photography and close-up in particular they offer such great composition techniques. This will be a really good guide for you to really start to think about close-up photography. So let's get on to location, let's identify a suitable spot and then we'll get on with comparing the two lenses. Here we go, we've got this really small cluster of spring flowers. This is what I'm going to use to go through the composition techniques of both the lenses, the advantages and disadvantages. So let's first cover some composition and aperture issues that I do see in a lot of close-up photography. Here you can see my composition. I've got the flower to the left third with the pollen, so the flower is pointing into the actual image. I've also got all of my information around the screen. Now, one of the things that I would seriously recommend, if you're like me, I often, I need to press that info button because I need to get rid of that information off the screen. I need to double check my composition. I need to check my focal point. You can see that at the moment as well, I'm on F2.8. Let me bring that info back up. You can see I'm here on F2.8. Quite often I see with macro lenses, people using too small a aperture. So if I take this image, the pollen is nicely sharp, but actually the front of the flower is too blurry for the image. But one, one thing also notice on the composition, the background is really blurred, which I really like. And what I've done with this one, composition tip here is frame this flower with the actual, so you've got a dark area around the flower itself, and then you've got a, a green frame, essentially, of the bokeh in the background. So what I'm now gonna do, I'm gonna up my aperture to about f4.5. So that'll give me the back leaves in focus. So let's capture that one. That's giving me my back leaves there in focus. But my front ones are still out of focus. So what I'm gonna do, is I'm going to up that to about f9. I'm going to keep the mid-range. You can see I'm on manual here. Let's have a look at the histogram. You can see my histogram is really nicely balanced. What I'm going to do is I'm going to change the focus point to the front of the flower. Now you can see there that what I've got is the front is superbly in focus, but the back isn't. And this is just giving you some of those aperture issues that you may come across. I'm just going to focus on the very front of the pollen there. And look at that, that I think is the right image. We've got a little bit of detail in the background and we've got the green in the background just giving us that detail. And we've got the flower, lovely and sharp, great little composition there. What I've done now is I've just put this log behind, again, non-destructive, so make sure that we don't damage any of the flowers that are in this little patch here. But what you can see is my composition has now changed quite dramatically. Let me get rid of the reflection for you. What we've got is the flower in focus in the center, top, well, top left and third. We've got the leaves of the flower just underneath, adding a little bit of highlight, and then we've got a really nice dark background. So I'm gonna do the same as I did before. I'm gonna do this on F2.8, as I did previously. And we can see there that that's a lovely image. We've got a little bit of blur in the leaves, but they're obviously leaves. We've got separation between the leaves, but we've got a lovely dark background. Now if I, bring that up. I'm just going to bring it up to f8. We've got the flower in complete focus. We have the leaves a little bit more in focus and then the little bit of texture in the background. And this is the power of the macro lens. And I've just noticed there's a little fly just on one of the flowers. So you can see here, a little fly just in the bottom of that flower. I've got it f16. The power of macro for close-up. So I've got the telephoto on now, I've got the 100 to 400. Look how far away, it's the same flower. The flower that I've been looking at is right over there. Look how far I am away. One of the things that the telephoto, you've got quite a different framing. You can't get quite as close. You can't get that one-to-one -one magnification that you can with a macro lens. However, let me get rid of the info again. Look at that. This is the kind of advantage I think you can get with close-up photography. Look at that composition. The leaves framing it at the bottom flower then appearing at the top. I've got it f6.3 because I want the bit of bokeh in the background, but it's obvious what kind of setting it's in. So that's absolutely brilliant. Just a little bit of detail in the background. There's a little bit of mess 
in the background. So let me, let me put the log back and see what difference that makes. So you can see my composition here. I've got the leaves across the bottom, the flower in the top third there. I've got this little bit of light patch in the top left-hand corner. See, I've got it f6.3, 1 60th of a second. So that's enough to freeze the action. Absolutely lovely, love that composition. And if you're finding this video useful or inspiring or any help whatsoever, please remember to hit that like and subscribe button. Your support for the channel is absolutely massively appreciated. Thank you and onwards with the video. And this is one of those scenarios, looking down on the flower where telephoto really does come into its own because you can get that frame. And also with the zoom capabilities, you can get that framing of the image as desired. Now it's time to undo the gardening, make sure it's been completely non-destructive. Don't want to do any uh, damage to the flora and fauna in this little woodland. Let's quickly run through a couple of short composition techniques which apply to both lenses and then I'll do a quick comparison of the two. In this one, what you can see, the compression of the background using the telephoto lens. I've got it at nearly 400. Absolutely amazing, foot right at the sharp end. But you can see the flowers in the background of the small garden, the small field of flowers here. And what we've got, we've got these two that are really facing us absolutely brilliantly. I like the way that they're both facing into the frame, just using the leaves just to confine the image a little bit. But also notice the separation between the field of flowers and the actual flowers that I want to concentrate on. Oh, absolutely lovely. Really like that. I've got it f6.3. I want to keep the aperture as low as possible. That's the lowest this lens will go to at 400 mil. And this is final composition before I talk about the pros and cons. But you can see what I've done here. I've added a foreground blur feature. So we've got the background bouquet and we've got the foreground bouquet. I love the way the flowers are pointing into the frame, by the way, on the thirds. Absolutely lovely. So how have I done this? I've actually put some moss on top of my camera bag, which is about a meter or so in front of the flowers that I'm capturing, which of those there. Absolutely, this is a great technique. Obviously again, non-destructive, but just put something in front of the lens to give you that bokeh effect. I love that composition. I really like that image. And I love the idea of adding some foreground bokeh as well to really give us context to those flowers. And so what tips, given my experiences, would I recommend? One of those is to potentially use manual focus. Sometimes lenses can be really tricky to focus. Also try to use diffused light. Today it's really grey and overcast, which has been absolutely brilliant. Harsh light on macro lenses can be really tricky. And as I showed in the compositions, experiment with both the backdrop and the foreground so that you can get that really great bokeh in the composition that you're trying to capture. And well, what about the telephoto? One thing I would say is use your tripod. You'll get greater stability. You can slow your shutter speed down. One of the things with telephoto, you don't want to show slow a shutter speed without using a tripod. And the other thing, use that image compression, same as the macro, use the background and the foreground to your advantage in your composition. And one of the other things to consider is maybe trying a teleconverter. If you've got a limited range on your zoom lens as it stands, maybe try a teleconverter because that will give you much greater reach. So we've left the location now. So let's summarize the advantages of both. I think certainly the macro lens with its one-to-one -one magnification is absolutely fantastic at getting extremely close. I'm just trying not to fall over on this trail. But of course, alongside that, one of the disadvantages, and this is something I see a lot of, is people use too small an aperture. They go right down to the f2.8 end. And actually, a lot of the image is actually too blurry. You lose detail, so just be careful of that. But it is absolutely fantastic for getting the detail when getting really close. And one of the other disadvantages is you do have to get really, really close. And sometimes you don't want to be walking over other flowers. You may be trying to photograph something that's a little bit skittish that may just fly away or jump away. So you just gotta be really careful with a macro lens. Absolutely brilliant in the right conditions. 
And where the telephoto really excels is in image compression. You can zoom in, you can get really great effects. You can be further away, so skittish animals, even flowers, you don't have to trap, trample over things, scare away any insects or birds or whatever it is you may be trying to photograph. And the other thing with the telephoto is, framing your final composition can be a lot simpler. You don't have to worry about getting the tripod into exactly the right location. You can use the zoom capabilities of the telephoto. Please share in the comments below which lens you prefer or if you, you do already use both and any composition advice that you may want to share as well. And what you think to the ideas that I've explained within this video. Please remember to like and subscribe to the channel and also check out these videos next. Thank you very much for your time in watching this video and remember to pick up that camera, get out and get some practice. That is what photography is all about. And until next time, thank you and see you soon.